Hey there, I'm Thomas and I'm bored again. So today I decided to show you an animation that I made quite a while ago for an app where at some point um, I found it was helpful for users to be able to search through a list of content. So I came up with the idea to make the search bar fade in and out like this. So today I'm going to show you how to build this in Flutter. Let's go. All right, so I've already set up a very basic Flutter app. I've taken the default template and routed it into the home component, a list page component that I created. Um, and this list page only contains a build method and a build body method because I like to separate the page layout and the actual contents of the page. Then let's just add a little bit of content. So I'm just adding three fruits, apple, banana, and mango. And now on the right, when we click on this search button, we want a search bar to appear in order to be able to search through this list of fruit. So what we want is a search bar that appears above this app bar on top of the app. So what we need for that is to wrap our scaffold widget into a stack widget. The stack widget allows us to put multiple flutter widgets on top of each other. So on top of our scaffold, we're going to put a positioned widget. This widget allows us to position any widget with absolute coordinates within the stack. So we're saying it should have a margin to the top of zero, also to the left and right, and it's going to have a height of 80 pixels. As a child, we're going to give it the result of a function that we're going to call build search bar. This function, of course, does not exist yet, so we need to create it first. It will return a widget and it will, like any build function in Flutter, take a build context. And we're going to return a container. And in order to see the container, we're going to give it a background color of red. So when you save, you can see that the top bar of our app is now red. We cannot click anymore because the container blocks any click events. So because we don't want our container to be possibly under the status bar or under some Android controls, we can wrap its children into a safe area. The safe area makes sure that all of its children are within the usable area of the screen so they're not being overlapped by the status bar or by some controls now we can give that child container the background color of red and we can see that it is not below the status bar anymore so because we don't want our search bar to just instantly appear we're going to add a clip path here the clip path widget allows us to specify exactly which area of our children widgets should be visible and which should be hidden so we can specify that we want a circular area of the of the search bar to be visible and the rest should not be rendered. Now we need to specify exactly which area should be visible. So we need to create a new file and we're going to call that search bar clip area. Now the first thing we're going to do is import all of the material components. And then let's define a class called search bar clip area, which extends the class custom clipper of type path. Now let's create an empty constructor and let's give it a member variable of type double. This percentage variable is going to define to what extent the area in the clip path is going to be hidden. Now we need to initialize this variable in the constructor and we want to make it required because without this percentage, the whole class does not make any sense. We're also going to find a function called get radius that takes a width and uses the percentage to calculate the width of the radius. So now there's three functions we need to override. The first one is called get approximate clip rect and it should return a rec that is the bounding box of the visible area of the children widgets so that Flutter doesn't have to render things that will not be visible anyways. The second method is called get clip and here we are exactly going to define how the path is going to look like that outlines the visible area. The first line here um, draws a path or it rather initializes the path at the top right corner at x equals width and y equals zero. Then it draws a line from the top right towards the left that has the length of the radius of the circle that is supposed to be visible. Then it draws an arc counterclockwise downwards until it hits x equals zero. 
Then it just draws a line back to where it started and we have a beautiful quarter circle with its center point in the top right corner of the screen. Finally, there's a third method we need to overwrite, which is called should reclip. And for now, we're just going to return true. This is all we have to do. And if we now plug in our search bar clip area into the clip path, we can see that from the previously completely red app bar, now only a circular area at the top right is red. And we can control the size of this area by changing the percentage parameter. If we make it smaller, the circle gets smaller. And if we make it bigger, a bigger area is covered by the red color. So the next step is to animate the circle in and out. For that to the class, we need to add a single state, single ticker provider state mix in. That's a hell of a long name. And what this does is gives this class the ability to host animation controllers. Then we need to create such a animation controller, which will take control of the animation of our search bar. We need to override the init state method because that's where we need to initialize the animation controller. We cannot initialize it at the top of the class because for that we need access to the this object, which is not available in member initializers. Here we can now set the duration of our animation, which we're going to set to 500 milliseconds. You can, of course, adjust this to whatever you like best. The lower bound of our animation will be zero and the upper bound will be one. So that's the minimum and maximum value this animation can have. And then we're just going to add a listener to the animation controller that whenever the value changes, we'll call the set state method, which causes the component to re-render. This is needed because otherwise the animation would not trigger any visual changes. Now let's go ahead and define two methods, one for opening the search bar and one for closing it. These methods will just tell the animation controller to animate to the upper bound or to animate back to the lower bound when we want to close the search bar. We can tell it which easing curve we want to use. So this will make the animation not linear, but it will make it slow down at the end and speed up at the beginning. I found that ease in out quart looks the best, but you can of course use a different curve. Now let's hook up the open search bar method to the unpressed callback of our search icon button. And when we press it, you notice that nothing happens. This is because we made changes to a variable that is being initialized in the init state method. Now the init state method is only being called once when the component that it belongs to appears for the first time on the screen. Now, of course, when we destroy it and it appears again, it's being called again, but that didn't happen here. So our animation controller is never being initialized. So currently we are trying to access it, but it has not been initialized. So to fix this, we need to just manually reload the app by hitting this green circle button and that will fix the issue. If we now hit the search button again, nothing happens. And this is because I forgot to assign the value of the animation controller to the percentage parameter of the search bar clip area. So if we plug in animation controller dot value here, now we should see an animation. And in fact, we currently see the animation in its completed state. So we can just reload the app again and that will reset the animation controller. And now we can click the button once and we will see the animation from the beginning. Now you may notice this little blue area on the bottom left here. This is because um, we are a little bit below the center line of the circle. So it of course does not span the entire area. And in order to fix this, we can just multiply the animation controller dot value by something like 1.01. .01, so make it 1% bigger than the width of the screen. And that will eliminate this issue also. Now that our basic setup is completed, we can begin to plug in a search text box. So I like to use the Cupertino text field here because it's a little bit more customizable than the material text field. Um, and it does not bring with it a lot of default styles. So that's what we're going to use here. You can of course use any text field you like and just do it the way you prefer. First thing I'm going to do is give it a decoration and with that eliminate the border so that we don't have that gray default border around it. Um, set the background color to white 
and give it a border radius. We're gonna give it a placeholder text that just says something like search dot 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 and then we will restyle the placeholder to be a little bit more subtle color because the default placeholder is quite dark and I really like how that looks but of course you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Then we add a suffix. This is an icon that is appended on the right hand side of the text input and here we're gonna plug in an icon button that will have the close icon so that we can close the search overlay if we're finished. <laughs> now this error took me by surprise a little bit, but I found out the reason is that the icon button, like any material widget, needs a material around it. And there is no material component up the tree, so we need to insert one and just give it the necessary styles that it needs to render correctly. So what we're going to do is wrap everything into a material component and that will fix the issue. Okay, cool. So now we can open and close our search bar, but one part of the trick is still missing. When we press the back button, uh, this will not do the expected and close our search bar. It will instead close the app because there is no state above this page, so it will just close the app entirely. Now, in order to make this work, because that's what the user would expect, we will add a new page. We could do this a little bit more easily, but the way we're doing it right now, we'll separate the code of the search page and the code of the page that is only used to display data, which will improve readability and generally code quality. So we are creating a new file that we're going to call search minus page dot dart, and this will contain a new stateful widget that we're going to call search page. This page will be opened once the opening animation of the search bar is complete and we will then open the page without an animation so the user does not really notice that a new page has been opened. Now again, we will add a scaffold, an app bar, and a build body method. The build body method will, as always, take a context and it will generate the body of our scaffold. Now in the open search bar method in our list page component, we are not only going to play the animation forward, we're also going to open the search page. So we're going to call navigator.offcontext.push and here we are going to provide a route that will construct our search page. Uh, there is a little difference to how things are done normally because right here we want to open a new route without an animation and the two default routes, the material page route and the Cupertino page route, both come with an animation that we want to avoid here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a page route builder that will let us handle all the animation stuff ourselves and we're just not going to do anything and that will give us a new page that will just immediately appear on the screen without any previous animation whatsoever. That's exactly what we're going to need because the search bar animation has already been played manually by us before and we don't need a animation to open the page anymore. Now the only thing that we need to do now is after the search page has been closed, which we can do by just awaiting the navigator.push method, we're just going to call the close search bar method and that is going to do everything for us. So once this route is closed, the animation will automatically play backwards. We can now also use the back button because we are now pushing a new route on top of the router and the back button will by default just pop the top route from the router. So this will automatically give us the closing functionality that we wanted to have. So what's left is styling the search page component to look like a search page actually and to give it a searching functionality. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to copy a little bit of code, not too much because that would be bad, but we're just going to borrow something from the list page component, which is the setup of the scaffold and the app bar. Now we're just going to copy over the stack and this position widget, which will build us the search bar and that will make the list page component look exactly the same in the open state as the search page is looking when the search animation has completed. Now, as you can see, once I open the new page, you can see that there is no harsh transition whatsoever anymore. The only thing that changes is the content is disappearing. We're going to fix that in a minute. 
about right now um there is one little bug and that is that the keyboard closes once the animation has completed which of course is not what we want because we would want it to appear once the animation has completed and for that to work there's two things we need in the list page component we are going to set enable to false on the search text field and in the search page component we are going to set autofocus to true for the cupertino text field this makes the keyboard appear right when the animation has completed, enabling the user to search for fruit. Now the content disappearing still looks a little bit rough, so I like to add a little transition here, but from here on it's really very much up to your own taste, so you can of course customize this code as you wish. And what I'm gonna do right now for the last couple minutes is add a small transition for the content. I originally made this animation for Palabrain, which is an app I developed that lets you learn vocabulary right on your Android home screen. The app offers some extra content for Spanish, English, and German, so if you're learning one of those languages, then check it out. It's completely free, currently only on Android though. So finally, let's build the transition animation. I want the content to fade in and out, and I want it to move from top to bottom so we have a little sliding out of view transition. What we're going to do is create a new function that will return a widget that we're also going to provide a widget and that will just wrap everything that we give it into a sliding downwards and fading out of view transition. For that, we're going to return a opacity widget. This opacity widget, we're just going to provide one minus animation controller that value and the child is going to be the widget child parameter of the fade out search function. If you want a vertical movement transition also, you can also wrap this opacity widget in a transform.translate widget. And the offset is going to be an offset of X equals zero and an offset of Y equals, for example, 16 times animation controller dot value. Now we just need to wrap the build body method into the fade out search method and that is going to provide the whole content of the list function with this nice animation. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope everything was clear. Um, if there's any questions, please hit me up in the comments. I'm trying to answer as many as possible. Um, I'm bored quite a lot right now because of quarantine and coronavirus and that stuff. So. There's probably going to come a lot more content in the future about similar topics, but maybe just also totally unrelated stuff. Um, just the stuff that I enjoy talking about, that I enjoy creating videos about. So if you're interested in that, please consider subscribing and maybe give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. That would help me out quite a bit. Um, apart from that, stay safe everyone. Stick to the Corona rules so this shit is over as soon as possible. Stay inside. Have a good time. Bye.